Okay, so for long ideas, the first name on my list this week, guys, is Mara. And I believe it was on last week's too. And it, the reason it was on last week's is the same reason it's on this week's. And that was because we were looking at Bitcoin last week. Bitcoin didn't do what it needed to do last week, but guess what? It did it now. So now we need to be looking at these names. And I, I talked about the setup's the same, guys. We've already got the long trigger. If you look at the weekly chart, you'll see it's got room up to the weekly 20. The problem is um, that's not a lot of room. Now, if Bitcoin gets going, I don't think the weekly 20 or the weekly 50 is going to stuff this thing for very long, right? Because we know how these things move when, when uh, the uh, emotions are high. Um, but yeah, it's got the higher low followed by the higher high. We triggered, we're, we're above, we you know briefly got above levels. We didn't close above them. And that's, a, that's a definitely something to point out, right? We, didn't, we never had that close above these levels. But I'm looking for a pullback to 25 on an emotional flush. You got the, the 20 day, the monthly 20, the 50 day, and you have a monthly pivot right there at 25.43. So I'm looking at 25 to 25.50. Um, I will, if it flushes emotionally, I'll be buying it right there off the, the 20 day, 25, 50 area. Okay. So that's the Mara idea. Um, the next long idea I have is NET and let's see if I can do this. I don't know if it's going to work or not. Um, but I'll give it a shot. Now, the reason NET is interesting is if you guys remember, I don't know if it was last week or the week before I talked about it as a long idea, but I also talked about it, or I talked about it as a, a long day trade idea, but I also talked about it as the possibility of a long swing setting up, and it did that. I just want to remind everybody of what was said about the, the setup, and now we can, and then after we play that, I'll, we'll revisit the idea. Let's see if that works. Um, I don't know if it's going to work. Let's see. But I may anticipate on a flush down into the 78 to 80 range, and I'll show you why. Here's the monthly chart. If, and this is, look at, you'll see, this is the monthly 20. This same setup occurred here. When that, when that triggered and rolled over, you got the higher low on the monthly chart. And I'm hoping that's what we do here. I want to break February's lows, but not break January's. Does that make sense to you guys? I want to come down in this range and make a higher low for the ability to get back over this 120, let's just call it 123, okay? To get back over 123 and get this thing really ripping. So I am willing to put an anticipation trade on this with defined risk, right? I know under 76.61, I'm gone. I don't care about it. And I will size appropriately so that if I get stopped out, it's no big deal. It's, it's whatever I choose to risk on this trade. But the risk reward is so skewed in this. Like, honestly, um, the very first targets are, you know, there's nothing really in front of it. We can use a weekly chart and try to set some more. So you got 140 is the weekly 20. That would be the very first spot where I anticipate having to consider locking profits, okay? All right, guys. So this is that chart now. Hopefully you guys see it. Hopefully you guys see what it did. And that's the setup that if you start to see these things before they happen, that's how you can get in a little bit before. Obviously, I, I think I said it in that little clip, right? That you get a lower win rate, but the risk reward is crazy, right? Because you can buy this dip thinking in your head, this could set up like this where we could get a higher low and your risk is under this low. And now if you're not in now, now when we go you got to chase or you got to buy dips and hope they hold but like you're not going to get that same risk reward that you got down here because if it comes back down here you're more than likely going to get stopped out like now that this is setting up like look how this one played out right it never came back down here you know we got that trigger we got going so i i do want to be watching this this week uh for a long setup on dips but the day i'm talking again for a day trade uh, if it does offer some sort of entry where you have defined risk at this point right now, I would be using under 80 as your stop. Uh, if you're not in yet, if you're in already from down here, your stop still needs to stay under these lows here, which is 76.61. And you know, whether you want to add to your position as it as it continues higher, however you want to play it, that's up to you guys. But uh, if you're not in. 
You know, you kind of have to think, okay, pullbacks to maybe 100 or something can give you a bit of an edge, but you're still looking at about 20 points of downside uh, as long as you understand where the possible reward is. You know, you can risk 20 points to the downside on a swing, and a lot of day traders don't really understand this because we're so used to keeping our risks so tight. But the swing traders and the position traders understand this, and that is you can have 20 points of risk if the upside is 70, 80, 90 points, when you get that skewed risk reward, it's okay to put those trades on. You just have to size appropriately. And then at the same time, another thing you need to make sure you do is that you hold for the target because you sized a certain way so that you could withstand a 20 point drawdown. You can't start scaling out when you're up 20 points, 30 points, 40 points, even though you might want to because you're like, wow, I'm up 30 points, right? Uh, if your target was 170, 180, and you're taking profits at 130, 140, because you just don't, you don't have conviction in your targets, you're shooting yourself in the foot and you're not gonna get the results that you would get um, from what your system says you should get, right? Your system should say, look, I can take this trade and be wrong a certain amount of times and still make a large amount of money because of the risk reward. Well, if you start taking your profits early, you're not getting that risk reward. Right, you start taking your profits when you're up 20 points. Now you're playing a one to one game, and guess what? One to one trades, you got to have a much higher win rate. And these swing trades, even though they're great because they, they can get going and you can capture some really big moves, you have to be okay with just being wrong and taking your losses when you're wrong. So make sure you guys understand the importance of holding for targets. And if you can't hold for your target, it means you're either not convinced that it's a legitimate target or you probably have too much size. Right? So I do like this idea. For a day trade, the level I want to look for for a, an emotional flush is 111-ish. Let's and I got that level pretty much from the five-minute chart. Uh, well, I had the five-minute right there. So I obviously see these lows right here at 115. That's about an ATR. Uh, no, it's not about an ATR on this name. Let me go back real quick and figure out what the ATR was. The ATR on this is 10 points. Okay, so that I think that was why I didn't use Friday's lows as uh as the level i'd try to bounce this it doesn't mean it won't bounce off 115 if we flush emotionally it just means that i'm not going to be involved in that trade because i'd much rather see we see us come down to thursday's lows um and the reason i like thursday's lows is because they coincide with also wednesday right you have two significant times that level was tested and gave a really good bounce so i want to be long biased on net and the 111 area is that area I would prefer to wait for to see if we come down there for that bounce. Um, so that's the NET idea, guys. All right. And the last idea on the longs for strong stocks looking for continuation is SE. Let's take a look at this. SE. This is one I've been kind of keeping an eye on because, you know, we had a really big sell off on this name. We've come in from three. Let's see. What were the highs up here? 370s to now 85s were the low, right? That's a giant, giant cut. So, you know, when we start selling off that much, I do start looking for bottoms, some, some things to form. I start keeping an eye a bit on inter, intraday price action to see like, are, are buyers starting to get aggressive or is it still like, you know, nobody's having any confidence in the name. And there were a few days back in when we were at the lows where I saw some things intraday that I was just like, man, that that does not look like someone that is uncertain about what they're doing, right? Um, and we did push up. Now what I'm thinking is we ran up into resistance and we're making this pullback. I think um, that it may start to hold some levels. Uh, so we closed at 116. The level I have written down is 111.80. Go back to a five minute chart again. We'll see that one too. Yeah, again, it's from these significant levels where we had this big, big flush. This, this sell off right here. When you get that bounce, that's the level I want to use. Obviously, uh, you've had one here and we could go higher from here and we could play that. I just think that level's a little close. So I've got written down 111.80 on SE and I'm looking for this to be a bounce play. Um, let me go look real quick at one thing. What's the liquidity on it? Yeah, it's a bit thinner on this name, but it's still, you know, trading 5 million shares a day um, for a $100 stock. It's still liquid enough for me where I'm fine with that and I'll play it 
Um, NET is probably somewhere similar, right? What's NET trading? Uh, Eight million or something? Let's see if it'll can it pull up? Five million. Yeah, so it's pretty similar. Both of them have pretty similar liquidity.